Hi friends, welcome to the very first episode of Music Mechanics. I'm really glad you're here. Before we begin, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the thrust of this channel and what we will be talking about. Simply put, this channel is called Music Mechanics because we're going to discuss the mechanics of music and audio, the principles behind how both work and are constructed. To be honest, when I decided to start this channel, I had difficulty picking a subject. My problem is that I pretty much love everything related to music and sound, whether it's music theory, improvisation, composition, orchestration, sample libraries, DAWs, mixing or mastering, anything really. But then it hit me. Do I really need to pick? I mean, as long as the concepts are presented in an easy to understand sequential fashion and I choose one topic to talk about at a time before moving on to the next one, where's the problem in that? So to me, the logical place to begin is music theory. So let's begin. To be honest, this wouldn't be my first choice for an opening discussion, but you have to talk about chords before you talk about harmony. You have to talk about notes before you talk about chords. You have to talk about pitch before you talk about notes. And you have to talk about sound before you talk about pitch. You might say this is a physics of music light discussion. I've called it the nature of sound, and although it is not necessary to know this to play music, much of this is fascinating and is useful from an engineering standpoint should you eventually decide to record your own music. So, as we all know, music is made up of sounds. But what exactly is a sound, and what are the components of it? Let's begin with the definition of one of the main components of sound, oscillation. Oscillation, as used in this definition, is a repetitive movement back and forth on either side of a central point of equilibrium. This movement is at a fixed rate of speed over time and can be illustrated with a swinging pendulum or old style metronome. Mechanical oscillation, the type of oscillation that applies to sound, is also known by the term vibration. To demonstrate how oscillation functions in regard to sound, let's look at a sinusoidal wave, otherwise known as a sine wave. A sine wave is considered a pure tone and is the simplest and most fundamental type of sound wave. Incidentally, they are called waves because of the up and down motion similar to ocean waves. Let's record a sine wave and look at the waveform, the two-dimensional visual representation of the recorded sine wave, to see what oscillation, or vibration, looks like. Let's zoom in now for a closer look. Notice the consistent up and down pattern of the wave, how it goes above the center line, the point of equilibrium, and then below the center line. The center line is referred to as the zero crossing. In sonic terms, each part of the wave that is above the zero crossing is called the compression phase. The point at the very top of the compression phase, the highest upward displacement, is called a crest. Conversely, each part of the wave that is below the zero crossing is called the rarefaction phase. The point at the very bottom of the rarefaction phase, the lowest downward displacement, is called the trough. This can be illustrated in the following picture. Let's zoom into our recorded sine wave a little more. If we look at the distance from one crest to the subsequent crest, we can identify what's known as a wavelength. A wavelength is one complete cycle of back and forth movement. Notice the wavelength starts at the first crest, drops down to the zero crossing to complete half a compression phase, the descending portion, drops down to the trough, and then back to the zero crossing to complete a full rarefaction phase, descending and ascending portions and then goes back up to the top of the next crest to complete half a compression phase, the ascending portion. This leaves us with a full compression phase. Both halves, descending and ascending, make a whole, and a full rarefaction phase, ascending and descending. Incidentally, a wavelength can be determined not only by the distance between consecutive crests, but also the distance between consecutive troughs. A wavelength can even be determined by the distance between consecutive zero crossing points at the same part of the cycle. For example, two consecutive descending portions of a compression phase at the zero crossing point. 
This would mean that every other zero crossing point constitutes a wavelength. One complete wavelength is called a cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles that occur per second. In other words, how frequent do these cycles occur per second? Frequency can be thought of as a measurement of the speed of the oscillation rate, or cycles, per second. The faster the oscillation rate, the higher the frequency. The lower the oscillation rate, the lower the frequency. The number of cycles per second is expressed in the term hertz and is abbreviated as hz. One hertz equals one cycle per second. For example, A440 is a popular standard for tuning instruments. The A represents the name of the note as it would be played on an instrument, while the 440 represents 440 hertz. So 440 hertz means there are 440 complete cycles that occur per second. Again, from a musical perspective, higher frequencies sound higher, while lower frequencies sound lower. So if we were to double 440 hertz, we would come out with 880 hertz, which would be perceived as a higher sound than 440 hertz. Two cycles at 880 Hz happens for every one cycle at 440 Hz. If we zoom in, notice that 880 Hz completes two cycles to every one cycle at 440 Hz. Incidentally, this doubled frequency, 880 Hz, creates a sound that is exactly one octave above the previous frequency, 440 Hz. An octave is a musical term that will be discussed in a future video. Looking at a piano keyboard, we see where these two frequencies exist. Notice the layout of the keyboard and where these two sounds are located in relation to the other black and white keys. This is what an octave looks like on the piano. Conversely, if we were to have 440 Hz, the resulting frequency would be 220 Hz. It would be perceived lower than the prior frequency of 440 Hz and would be exactly one octave lower. Zooming in, we notice that only half a cycle at 220 Hz is completed to a full cycle at 440 Hz. Let's try this. Frequencies can get quite high, and so another term is often used, kilohertz, which is abbreviated as KHZ. 1,000 Hz equals 1 kilohertz, so 10 kilohertz equals 10,000 Hz. Let's go back to our sine wave example again. Watch what happens if we make the sine wave louder or softer. Notice how the crest and troughs are displaced further from the zero crossing as the sine wave gets louder, and also how they get closer to the zero crossing when the sine wave is softer. Thanks for watching the video. 
be sure to like and leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.